Hello everyone, this is Professor Todd Giles again, and we're trying to get finished up here on the Roman architecture. Um, in this video, we're going to feature the Pantheon in Rome, and I don't mind telling you that I've done this video today about five times, and I keep running over my time limit, and I'm trying to cut it down. So I'm going to speed through here, see how I can do, and then move on, okay? Because we still need to hit Byzantine and early Christian art for this week's videos. So what we're looking here is the Pantheon. And what does Pantheon mean? Pan means all, Theon or Theos, God. So all the gods, all the gods are are to be represented within this one temple. Um, within Rome, there were various temples to various gods, but here it was a temple set up for many, many, many gods. Some say that um, as Rome expanded and they would overtake different societies, they would incorporate their, their gods into the pantheon of the Roman gods and then set up the icons or the, um, the statuary of those other gods in this building. Um, sort of respect, but also saying, we've beaten your gods and our gods are better. Um, so it really is a show place um, showing the power of Rome. Now, for us, we're looking at the structure itself, not really the purpose as much. And the structure is just awesome. I will tell you that. And as we go through here, I'll point out some of the details. Um, and I hope when you travel to Rome, you beeline it to this spot to look at this temple, this piece of architecture, um, because it is absolutely um, wonderful. Okay, so what are we looking at? We are looking at the front porch of the Pantheon. It has the ingredients of a temple. Here's the pediment with the roof and then that triangle pediment and then the entablature here, this flat part, and then the columns below. These columns are what kind? Yes, Corinthian columns. They're the most ornate and these are borrowed from Greece um, style-wise. All of the columns that you see here are granite and they come from Egypt. So they're showing their power, not just Italian marble, but they can actually now get these over 50 feet tall columns across the Mediterranean to this spot to hold up the front porch of this temple. So it's power that they're showing. Now, here's an aerial view. And what you see here is the front porch with um, tile. And then you have a rotunda, the cylinder, and then you have the dome itself. Now, one of the things that you need to understand about this is if you go back to this view, we can walk straight into the temple here from the ground, just walk straight in. But originally, the ground was about 12 to 15 feet below this surface. So imagine walking up to this temple far below where you are now, and you can't see anything above this roof line. So it looks like a normal temple, but it really isn't. So what's unique about it? Well, what's unique about it is this view of this building is the dome itself. Absolutely immense. You come in the front entrance, which is right here, really the only entrance, and what you see is just you're engulfed by this space, this volume that is, again, immense. I, it, it's almost without... Um, you can't get the right words to describe it. Um, if you've been to an arena uh, for a hockey game or a basketball game, it's like that except to an extreme. 
Um, we'll talk sizes here in a second. Um, but everything that you see here is basically original. The floor is marble from all over the empire, and it's absolutely original. It hasn't been torn up. This level here, all the little chapels and all of these um, areas here with the columns in front of it, those are the original design, although there are um, the pagan paintings and the pagan images and statues are taken away, except now they're converted into uh, Roman Catholic imagery. And then here on the second level, this is more of a Baroque design. Um, so that really isn't original. Those window areas probably are, and some art historians have conserved this area, and this is really what they think it would have looked like. It would have been a much simpler design up here. And then above is the Great Dome. Um, now, the dome itself has two main features to it. Obviously, the oculus, the opening in the dome that allows light in, but also when it was a Roman temple, it allowed smoke to get out because there were sacrifices being offered all the time to these various gods. So imagine this place filled with smoke. Um, imagine a very smoky barbecue <laughs> during the summertime with lots of grills going, and this place would be filled with smoke, which might have added to a little bit of a mystical effect um, because it was a religious building. But it would allow the smoke in, allow sunlight in. The other feature are these coffers, or these rectangular, rectangular design elements in the dome that catches the light and it creates highlights, and it creates shade. So it creates pattern, it creates contrast. It looks great, but it isn't just aesthetics. It's actual engineering. And this is a great way to make the dome lighter. As this stair steps back into the solid concrete, that's less and less concrete or thickness in that area. But then you have these horizontal areas that are thicker and stronger, and these vertical lines here, or ribs, that are stronger because they're thicker. Now, these areas are still very thick at this point, but it gets thinner and thinner as it goes up. So engineering-wise, it's bringing together both strength and beauty into this dome. Now, here's an artist's conception of what it might have looked like. Um, the feature here is this dome on top was covered in solid bronze plates, polished bronze. So it almost looked like gold in sunlight. And that really is to portray the power of Rome. And as you come over the hills outside of Rome and you look down, that would gleam in the sunlight. And if you um, catch a couple scenes within the movie Gladiator, you can see the dome in that scene, just for a couple seconds. Now, let's look at the size. The size of the dome, again, is absolutely immense. It's 143 feet wide and in a cylinder. It's 143 feet tall, so it's exactly the same height as it is its width. So you can put a perfect sphere within it. And many, um, uh, the theories are that it's that way because the sphere is the most perfect um, shape. Okay, it's a circle, it's unending, but it's on uh, every direction is a circle. Okay, so um, really it's a perfect building in many architects' eyes. Okay, now, here, let's talk about the construction. It's made up of solid concrete on the rotunda itself. And you can see it, like this portion here, it's 22 feet thick. Solid concrete, covered in brick, then covered in marble. And then, 
as it gets higher and higher, it gets thinner and thinner until it's about six feet tall or thick at the oculus. Now, this is an arch, and it's an arch that's been turned 180 degrees, so it's a full dome, but we see that the weight from above is being brought down the sides and down the side of the rotunda, okay? We see something similar to this once we get to the Gothic architecture where they're building higher and higher. Well, here, this arch is rounded and it brings all that weight down. It's all about weight distribution. If you wanna go higher, you have to make things lighter and distribute the weight better so that the whole weight does not come crashing down on um, elements that cannot sustain it. Okay, now again, how big is this? Well, this is a schematic of a football field. Here's the 50 yard line. Here's the goal line. So it's nearly 50 yards. So if you're into sports and you know about 40 yard dashes, an athlete could do a 40 yard dash here and still have room pretty much to slow down before hitting the wall. It is immense. And I know I keep saying that, um, but I want you to be able to actually understand how big this is. And it's just marvelous. If you go to Rome, you have to beeline it over to this place to actually see it and experience it. Um, go on Vimeo, go on YouTube. There are some wonderful videos of this um, place. All right, and a couple minutes that we have left, a couple of real quick things is, let's talk about Constantine. Here's Constantine, and he's um, one of the later emperors he created Constantinople, um, but this is an image of him that we've seen, or the type that we've seen before, a, a bust, but it's not. Here he is. Here's his foot next to these uh, pictures of travelers in Rome. This actually went into a huge basilica. Now you see more parts of them. A basilica is a large public building um, of Roman design, and later in the empire, they started making huge basilicas. And here's one, um, it's called the Basilica of Maxentius and Constantine. And we see there are one, two, three immense arches. There would have been another structure just like that on this side that's been torn down. But this is solid concrete, and this statue would have been inside of it. It would have been absolutely immense and huge. There would have been um, a place over here for that statue. You can see how big or how small people are compared to these arches. And there you can see some coffers. So how big is it? That's another football field. So you can fit the actual actual playing field almost inside the main structure. And you see this is one arch, another, and another. And then this apse here is where that great sculpture of Constantine would have been. Because this is so big, you don't have a person-sized sculpture of your emperor. He has to be big. It has to be huge, or else it just doesn't look right within this huge space. Um, you can go on YouTube and find a couple really good videos of this. Um, and the next video will actually talk about early Christianity and Byzantine. Thank you.